Small mouth and hot weather don't usually go together. Look at that. I made a poem, Jeff. Off the top of my head. Genius. Today, we are going to talk about how to catch smallmouth in the dog days of summer. Hot weather, you know, high water temps aren't usually a smallmouth's best friend, but this can be the time of the year where we can absolutely jack some giant smallmouth. So if you are ready, we are going to break down our five favorite ways to catch dog days of summer smallmouth. So let's do it. Welcome to the Hookup Tackle. The Hookup Tackle is the world's largest showcase of Mega Bass products, featuring baits and colors not found at any other dealer. The Hookup also offers a wide display of OSP, Evergreen, Depths, Lucky Craft, Jackal, and many more. The Hookup Tackle is owned and operated by family, is staffed by guides and verified tackle nerds who love helping anglers elevate their craft. If you're in the Phoenix area, we'd love to have you stop by our showroom and check out the wonderful world of Mega Bass and the Hookup for yourself. If you shop online, there are almost 10,000 SKUs of Mega Bass products alone with hundreds of other companies and new products being added daily. So next time you're looking for that hard to find bait, that color your fish have never seen before, or maybe you just want to elevate your game, look at thehookuptackle.com. All right, my friends, welcome back. I am Ben with The Hookup Tackle, AKA The Tackle Otaku, joined by my buddy, Jeffrey the King. We are The Hookup Tackle USA. So today we're talking smallmouth, Jeff, and we're talking hot weather smallmouth. Mm. You excited? Uh, not really. So people watching this are probably thinking, what the fuck are a couple of guys from Arizona gonna teach me about smallmouth? Basically, yeah. Right? And maybe nothing, so enjoy, enjoy <laughs> a beer or a coffee. Yeah, you know, you might, you might not learn a fucking thing, actually, but. <laughs> I like to talk about smallmouth. So, fun little fact, smallmouth in Arizona, it, we have a ton of smallmouth here. And it's something that has been my favorite fish to chase since I was a little kid. So, growing up, I spent most of my summers actually in White River, Arizona, which is a small little town on the Apache Indian Reservation, forest smallmouth streams, smallmouth rivers, and I just, I fell in love with them. And now that I'm grown up, our main water supply through Arizona is the Colorado River, and it's just choked full of smallmouth. So we smallmouth fish every chance we can get. My first bass tournament that I ever won was smallmouth lake, hmm. right? So while we don't have the readily available smallmouth fishing, like literally in our backyard, like a lot of you guys do in Wisconsin and Minnesota and Michigan and you know you fortunate people in all these amazing places with smallmouth we do chase smallies a lot here and we deal with super high water temperatures and smallmouth a lot too temperatures into the 90s which is not you know common in a lot of places so we see smallmouth go through you know huge transitions from winter you know through spawn all the way into like crazy dog days of summer so you know, there are certain baits that, you know, work all the time for smallmouth, and there are certain baits that really, you know, when it's just super hot, we just find that we, we crush them on. So those are the baits we're gonna talk about today. So when the temps climb and your water temps really soar, you know, hopefully some of this can translate to where you guys are fishing, you guys can catch more fish. So pretty much every conversation we're gonna have when we're talking about summer and fall is going to start with top water. Yep. Right? So, you know, buckle up, motherfuckers. We're going to talk about a lot of top water over the next <laughs> few months. Just because it's, you know, it's the funnest way to catch them, I think. Don't you? I mean, can you think of a better way to catch them, Jeff? Uh, no. Yeah. I mean, top water is the shit. So, if you can get them on top water, it's a great time to do it. So, for me, top water and smallmouth in summer is kind of a three prong approach. And it really depends if I'm fishing still water or current. Right, so we have a lot of you know lakes, still water, and we have a lot of you know river sections that we'll fish in current. And I approach them very differently with my bait selection. So, if I'm fishing still water, my go-to is a Tekel Kick Knocker, and this is going to become a trend in a lot of these videos as well. What I will introduce here, especially when smallmouth are involved, is the Kick Knocker Pup, which is the smaller size. So the Kick Knocker has a really loud knock in it. It's a great one 
from moving very fast and calling fish from a long way. This is a great one. If you guys have weed beds, it will call them through the grass and they can find it. If they're suspended and roaming in open water with bait schools, it's a great one for them to find it and come chase it down. So uh, kick knocker is a no brainer. It's always on my rod when I'm fishing lakes. You can move it very fast and you get some super aggressive strikes from the smallmouth. Now, some days this may only last you know, 30 to 60 minutes. It might be a very small little bite window, right? It's first thing in the morning, it's last thing in the evening. Some days you might get lucky, get some cloud cover and it extends out, but the kick knocker is definitely one to have in the arsenal. Now, if I'm fishing current, if I'm going river fishing, right? Then I would love to catch them on the kick knocker, but sometimes in the current, it just, the way it moves, it's harder to really pick apart a current area. So generally speaking, when am I in current? I switch up to more of a popping style bait. So the two that I throw a lot, the Labina Rio Rico and the Depths Pulse Cod Junior are the two that I love to throw. Typically the Pulse Cod has kind of become my go-to starting point now. Uh, the Rio Rico is just a staple out here. Both have that same kind of loud sound. Let's take it out of the package so it doesn't sound like banging around in packages. So kind of the same idea as that kick knocker, right? It's got that loud sound to kind of call them from a long ways away. The Pulse Cod has a spring loaded tungsten weight in the head. So when it shifts, right? Again, that same kind of loud sound that's gonna call them. But the reason why I like a popper over a walking bait and current is because a lot of times you'll have the seams, you'll have the current coming down, and the fish will be very isolated on a specific rock, a specific eddy. And it's just very easy to throw a popper in and give it the one or two little pops and just let it kind of breathe so that the fish have a target to get. Versus a walking bait that sometimes you have to throw and you, it moves out of their lane so fast they don't get a chance to get it. And rarely will they swim downstream and then back up to chase something. You've really got to get them in those specific isolated targets and that's where the popper comes into play. So great one in the summer, you know, small specific cast, popper. The other thing that I love to throw is basically the same idea but it allows me to instantly get it moving and I don't have to wait for it to walk. I don't have that belly of the line pulling my walking bait to where I make the perfect cast and it takes me a couple movements to actually get it to do its thing. This is a bait I can throw and instantly turn the handle and get the bait to do what it's supposed to do and that's a buzz bait. Now the strikes on a buzz bait in the summertime are so violent. So this is probably the funnest way to get them when they're smoking it. If they're ultra, ultra aggressive, uh, this is the bait that we will choose to go to. It's also a great one for fishing through heavy cover, thick grass, because it's not gonna have the treble hooks dangling below it. I will bounce back and forth basically uh, between the Jamaica Boa from Mega Bass or the Buzzbeat from OSP. And this is gonna be my basically loud option when I really want it to make a lot of sound similar to what we talked about with the Kick Knocker to really draw them. And then the Jamaica Boa is gonna be more of my quiet option when I want to be a little bit more finesse or I need to make a really long cast, that's a great one. All right, if they're not smoking the buzz bait and I'm getting a lot of aquatic growth, so a lot of weed growth, and I know the fish are just kind of tucked in that grass and they're not committing all the way to coming up to the surface, then what I'm looking to do is I'm looking to try to get a bait as close to those weeds as I can. Something that maybe is just hovering just above the weeds, maybe ticking the weeds every once in a while, but it's easier for the fish to just kind of suck it in and stay there versus coming all the way out of the grass, eating off the surface and coming all the way down. And that's where a jerkbait really comes into play for me. Now, jerkbait, we've talked about it here all the time, that it's a year-round technique out here. Really, I believe it's a year-round technique everywhere as long as you kind of adjust your jerkbait to the season. This time of the year, I'm super into big, aggressive, fast-moving jerkbaits for smallmouth. So these are the two that I throw most is the Mega Bass Edo Shiner. Talk about that one a lot. The OSP Retro 130, the Pointer 100 would be the next one that I would be throwing. Something that's big, loud, aggressive, that I can just work really fast. Less pause, more movement. I want that thing big, side to side movement. Both of these baits have loud sound. 
right? So again, same idea that we were doing with the top water. I want the fish to be able to find the bait. I want the fish to be able to key in on it, even when they're tucked in and sucked into cover and grass and shade. I want them to know that thing is coming so it's easy for them to pinpoint it, pull out, eat it, and go back through. This time of the year, I'm probably throwing this on 12 or maybe even 14 pound tests because I want to keep it up above the grass. On these bigger, larger jerk baits, you can get away with heavier line and still get good movement in them. Uh, of course, you can downsize line if the grass isn't really high or maybe there is no grass. You want the bait to get down a little bit deeper. Then, of course, you could go to eight or 10 pound. But most of the time, for me, the jerk bait is a vegetation type bait this time of the year. So, really looking for those edges and ticking the tops so the heavier line will work. But either one of these are great. Try them. I think you will love this bait in the summer. You're going to extend your jerk bait season a lot, and smallmouth love this thing. All right, if I'm fishing still water, so, right, so I'm, I'm lake fishing. It is really tough to beat a crankbait when the fish are schooled up. So the Blitz series of crankbaits is basically the go-to crankbait for smallmouth in the summer. If, hey, you don't have to take my word for it, just do some research, do some Googling, see who's winning the major summertime smallmouth tournaments and what they're winning on, and you will find the Blitz series is basically the king of crankbaits in the summer. So the two that I throw the most are the Blitz DR and the Blitz EXDR when I'm talking about smallmouth and I'm talking about summertime fishing. Blitz EXDR is a great one for that 12 to 15 foot depth zone. Really where I think the crankbait shines over some of the things we're gonna talk about next like soft plastic jigs is when the fish are schooled. When they're in schools and they're sitting on some kind of piece of structure, uh, and it could be anything, it could be a rock pile, it could be a pile of grass, it could be a break line. The crankbait coming through and moving just draws aggressiveness out of the school. And it's a great way to just jack a ton of them really fast. So the Blitz EXDR is kind of the no brainer for me in the still water. The Blitz DR doesn't get quite as deep. So this is gonna be a good like eight to 10 foot diver. So this is one that can cross over as well into current. And I can just kind of run bank with it. I can just fish different seams, you know, a little bit shallower shoals and that kind of stuff and still kind of ground the rock. It does have sound in it, right? So you're still gonna get that vibration and that sound as it's coming through. But smallmouth magnets, this is also usually where I live if I'm night fishing. Right? So Griff and I have been talking about night fishing for smallmouth. He's got a different approach than I do. I'll let him chime in his nonsense here in a minute. And then we'll, we'll solve our debate on the water this week. But at night, smallmouth have a really hard time resisting a loud, shallow to mid diving crankbait. They absolutely smoke it. So definitely something that's in my arsenal all summer. All right, and if they're just not reacting to, you know, the top to mid column, then you've got to go to the bottom. And a lot of a lot of days, it's a combination of all of this, right? Summertime for me is really kind of a junk fishing time of the year. Rarely do I just catch them all day on one thing, right? So normally it's a combination of all of these things we're talking about. For me, when I go to the bottom, where I almost always start is with a jig. So. This time of the year, I'm living on a football jig. This is a depth headlock jig. I talk about this jig a lot. This is my go-to uh, finesse football jig. I'm usually throwing a 5 8 or 3 quarter ounce this time of the year. It's tipped with one of two things typically for me, either a doe live crawl or a mega bass rock hog. That's kind of my new trailer. This is gonna have a little bit more aggression to it. So it's gonna have more flap. This is gonna have a little bit more subtlety to it. So more of just kind of a flow. But I like to go to the heavier size. It just lets me fish a little bit deeper and it lets me fish faster. So, you know, when the fish get lethargic and they get hot, you kind of have to go one of two ways. You have to either really slow down and just really drag slow and let it just soak in front of their face for really long periods of time. Or you kind of go the opposite way and you move your shit really fast and you just try to draw some kind of aggression for them, right? They're just super lazy and they don't want to do anything, but all of a sudden something just comes and hits them in the face or drops right in front of them. And before they even have a chance to think they don't want to eat it, they've eaten it, right? 
to me, that makes a lot more sense for how I like to fish. I, I find it to be more enjoyable to fish quick and just try to get some aggression out of them. So I like that heavier size. This is something that I can fish all the way from the bank out to you know 30, 40 feet even. So if you're in still water, you can easily throw this on deeper structure, big rock piles, that kind of stuff. If you're in current and moving water, you can easily just kind of bounce it down whatever type of stuff you're fishing in the jacket. I usually just stay pretty simple, green pumpkin type colors. If they're feeding on crawdads, I pretty much just live on green pumpkin, green pumpkin. If they're feeding on gobies or that kind of stuff, then usually I'll add something that has some kind of like cinnamon or blue flake and kind of make it a two-tone. And that seems to be a really good attraction type of color to them. But no right or wrong, whatever colors work in your area or are getting them to trigger is great. But definitely the football jig is a staple in the summer. Now, staying in that jig lane for a minute, the other bait that is pretty much always tied on for me in the summer is the Mega Bass Dark Sleeper. Now, in the summer, I'm basically fishing this just like a jig. I'm throwing it the same way I'm throwing that football jig. Usually for me, I'm gonna be in a half or three quarter ounce. Again, I want the little heavier weight so I can fish it a little bit more aggressively. I'm just doing the same exact thing we just talked about with the football jig, only instead of it having that crawl or that flow, this is just gonna give it more of a bait fish look. It's gonna have that little kind of paddle tail. So if you guys are fishing anywhere in the north or east where they have gobies, this is, I mean, this is a no brainer. You guys should definitely be throwing this. It's one of the perfect goby imitations. Out here, we don't have gobies, but the fish are used to feeding on the bottom. They're used to sucking up crawdads in the summer, and they're never gonna let a good meal get away, especially in current, right? So even though, you know, we don't see a lot of, you know, basically shad or whatever sitting right on the bottom, this is just giving them something different that is offered to them where they're positioned so it could be a great backup to the jig. It's kind of a great one-two punch. You know, between the football jig and the dark sleeper, you can kind of cover all the different looks and aggressive you know, behavior or non-aggressive behavior in two baits, right? Change your trailer, make it more of a flow, make it more of a flap, go with the dark sleeper, make it more of a paddle, and you've kind of covered everything, right? So between something in here, you usually find what they're relating to and you get the bites. Now, if I don't, right, and I've kind of gone through that process and they're still not relating to it, then I always fall back to the drop shot. And we talk about the drop shot a lot. It's, in my opinion, it's not the funnest way to catch them unless they're just absolutely just destroying it and they're destroying it. I don't care what it is, let's go catch them, right? For me in the summertime, the no brainer bait is the Mega Bass 3 inch Hazadong Shad. Now you could also throw a little curly tail worm. This is a great time for that little two and a half inch Kamari Curly, four and a half inch Curly Tail Robo, but the Hazardong Shad still reigns supreme for me in the summer. And the biggest reason for that is it allows me to fish it quick. Okay, so this is still staying in a theme here with smallmouth that I wanna fish it faster than how most people are fishing for these fish in the summer. And with the Hazardong Shad, I can nose hook it and basically I'm just drop swimming it. So I'm throwing it out there and I'm basically just continuously dragging it. And then when I'm kind of done with my drag, I'm just kind of winding it up and then I'm dragging it again. All that bait's doing is it's just kind of swimming along and then pausing and then swimming along, but it's just, it's moving. It's not giving them a chance to thoroughly think it through. I want it to kind of go right by their face and they have to decide that fast, right? If I give these lethargic fish too long of a look at something, they will outthink me, right? They will know it's fake. They will know they don't want to eat that shit, right? I want it moving really fast so that they eat it before they realize that they ate it, right? And this gives me that great chance. In the summer, I'm trying to keep it pretty natural. So where in the spring, I was throwing a lot of real bright or gaudy colors, chartreuses, pinks, whites, that kind of stuff. In the summer, typically they're gonna go more natural. So ghost shad, green pumpkin shad, Morocco, that kind of stuff is usually where I fall. But you're gonna have to adjust the color to your water to your forage, if you guys are fishing darker water, maybe something with a little more pop, some chartreuse, something would be good. If you're fishing gobies, you know, or perch, maybe something that's a little bit darker color would be good. But this is a no brainer, easiest way to catch them in the summer is the drop swim with the Hazardong Shack.
All right, so everything that Ben said makes a lot of sense, and they're definitely great options. But if you want to have a good time and have some fun, yes. This is where you need to be. As soon as that sun starts coming down, the smallmouth will destroy these things. Thank you. And there you have it. Great inside, inside? Great insight from Griff. You know, you know what's a good time to me? Trust the science. Catching bass. I mean, casting and shit is cool, but <laughs> catching them, that's a whole other level. You'll see. All right, well, there you go, guys. Those are my five favorite ways to catch summertime smallmouth and Griff's two ridiculous ways to catch summertime smallmouth. We'll just have to see how the summer goes, Jeff. Yes. You guys will have to let us know how these different techniques work for you. Uh, of course, I'd love to hear from you guys. What is working for you guys when the temperatures are high and the fish are getting weird? Post down below, let's, let's share the info. Let's, let's make it one big community to share. If you guys have any questions on what we just talked about, drop me a question down below and I will definitely get to it. Jeff will leave links to the products if you wanna check any of them out, you can. And until next time, Arigato gozaimasu. Thank you guys for the business and the support, and we will see you again soon. Peace out.